right, everybody, on today's episode of Pinchy House Garage with Mark. Mark. <laughs> there. Mark the Teenager and his Mark IV. We're going to be doing the cam chain tensioner since it uh, failed on us, so let's get to work because this is Pinchy House Garage with Mark. So, first things first, with everything, Mark likes to wear gloves because he's like a little girl and he <laughs> likes clean hands apparently. And a weenie. But, you know, I'm not here to set judgment, but I'm going to judge him anyways. Um, so, what he has already done is taking the coil, uh, the coil harness off, or the ignition harness. He's already taken off the, the coil packs. Um, he's broken loose all the bolts or removed the bolts from the valve cover. So the last thing he's trying to do is get the last uh, annoying bolt uh, nut on the back right hand corner of the head here. Uh, once he's done with that, we're gonna take the valve cover off and then we're gonna set the timing on the engine. Once the engine's uh, timing is set, uh, we're gonna, actually no, we're gonna take all that off but leave the valve cover on, set timing, and then we're gonna, um, take the valve cover off, and then we're gonna move forward on what to do next. So Mark just set the timing to TDC. We took the spark plugs out, that way we can crank the engine a lot easier. And now he's gonna take the valve cover off and we're gonna double check timing on the on the chains before we pull the tension around. Imagine, Go. Imagine it's not TDC. Uh, I'm going off your TDC, you timed Because my TDC is accurate. Hopefully. Were well, you driven how many miles? 21 miles. Okay. So that's Mark, uh, and teenager, uh, and this is his Mark IV. So he actually built the motor. So he actually rebuilt well, the entire. Well, technically, motor. you built it. I walked you through the entire process. Come on. No, you built it that one. You built it for like a week. Yeah, but we, we he did. So the, we bought. We got this car for free. Oh really? That's awesome. We got it for free for a friend, but the transmission was uh, had a gigantic hole in the crankcase. I mean, it's had the, the Chinese transmission, so we're just like, we bought what? Yeah, we don't know. And then we, we swapped the transmission and we went to the junkyard. We literally went there, dropped the transmission, got it on, swapped it out, the car ran great. And then it just exploded. Really? And it overheated like crazy. Well, it never It overheated. Remember, the, the head gasket blew. And it was pouring water oh. into the cylinders. Yeah, I've never, I've never seen the overheat inside the engine. No, you didn't see it overheat, yeah, but yeah. it was overheated yeah. in a different way. So the cylinders were filling up with, with water. Yeah. And the car stopped cranking, remember? Yes. Wait. Yes, yeah. Yes, it stopped turning on. Oh, that's Sophia. What was it that? That's Sophia. Hey, she's doing another project. Oh, cool. So, you got it? All right, come on over. We're going to air dry it. Wasn't that? So explain to them what you're doing, Mark. Taking off the camshaft holder. With all the noise in the background. Oh, we're taking off the camshaft holder. Cam caps, not camshaft. Oh. Camshaft's on the bottom. Camshaft. Oh, yeah. Cam okay. Cam okay. We're taking off the cam caps. Cam caps. Cam on caps. the intake side. Intake side. So First. Easily? Hold on, yeah. Huh, I thought you had to take out that little. Let's just push down. So, the next step here is that he's already broken uh, one, two, three, four of the main caps. There's still number five and number six. And the number six is really long. And number five, this one or the first one, is really long as well because there's a whole assembly over here. Mm -hmm. um, you also need the three that are back here on the, on the back of the block. Okay. okay, so there's one, two, three. Make sure you unplug the sensor. Once you do all that, we're gonna break loose the cam. We're not removing it. We're gonna break it loose. Right. But before, even before you do that, you need the cam tool too, mm -hmm. okay? So you need the cam locking tool so we can tension the chain down. Mm -hmm. I mean, tension the, uh, the tensioner down so we can remove the chain, mm -hmm. all right? So take this cap off, and these caps off, and this cap off. Leave these alone for now. We need the tool, to tighten that down. Okay, it's in the toolbox in the left drawer. And that should be it. 
Okay, and then oh, and the cam cap. This has this cap. I mean the cam sensor has to come off. Mm -hmm. We now install the, the cam tensioner tool to loosen the chain. Just about a link, I think two links loose. Uh, now the next step here is to take the cam caps on the, oh, the cam chain, the cam sensor has to come off first, the 10 mil. Then the cam cap out here, then the cam caps here, and the tensioner bolts on this side. Then we can work on taking, uh, breaking loose the, the exhaust cam. Now the exhaust cam won't come off, it was just gonna be loose. Um, with Slider. that way, we can uh, take the chain off the actual cam, and then everything else will come out with it. The goal is so that the, the chain stays attached to the exhaust cam while we do all the work uh, from the tensioner to the intake cam, and this allows us to pretty much not um, lose timing. Is our biggest thing is losing the losing timing on the engine um, because we don't want to remove a belt and put a belt back on. It's just so much work. Loosen these up. All these out, we gotta loosen these up. Okay. Uh, we loosen it a little bit. Now we don't remove them. Yeah. Okay. We break them loose, mm -hmm. just a little bit. And you'll see this, this will, will go up on its own. Mm -hmm. Okay. This one's already went up. Yeah. And that's it, all right? Okay. So Mark, tell me what you have done. So we've taken off these fully, basically, and then we have loosened these exhaust side. This one has to come off completely. Okay. Basically. <laughs> What's up, Sophia? Serious? Are you like? So There you go. Now pull them all out. Just yank them out. Pull the okay. bolts out. Oh, the bolts? Yeah. <laughs> I think when we're done with this, I'll bring my GoPro and then we can time lapse them. I think we'll be like just starting to tear it down. I told you, man. I told you. I feel like the actual engine is going to be as hard. Sure. <laughs> Alright, there you go. I bet you by the time you're done, your wife will just go full like backyard garden here and have like, full meals ready to go before you leave. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm just thinking right now. You got me going. Got me going. Okay. So, you'll see here, it's already super loosey goosey. Mm -hmm. Okay. But it's not enough so the chain can get taken out. Yeah. And that's the reason why we can't, again, mm -hmm. the reason why um, it's not possible because the cam is still, this cam is still attached. Mm -hmm. So what we do is that we break them loose. We walk them up a little bit. We don't remove them. We walk them up, like say, four turns, four turns, four turns, four turns. If that gives us enough movement here, mm -hmm. and then we can probably uh, slide the chain out. Mm -hmm. So loose the, loosen these up now again. Okay. This one needs to go up a bit more. How's uh, McDubbin doing? McDubbin? Mm -hmm. McDubbin. Oh, stop, 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 stop. He's doing good. Oh, the guy from uh, uh, oh, Minnesota, I think, or Minneapolis, yeah. something like that. Uh -huh. He's frozen. Oh, huh. Yeah, the place is cold right now. Yeah. The toolkit has come in clutch so many times. Oh, we're still recording. Okay. All right, cool. Yeah, no, it's, I mean, yeah, he, he helped you out. He yeah. gave you a fat, hooked you up, man. It's a really good tool, okay? You'll see here, look. you see how, okay, guys. So now that we broke loose the, the exhaust cam, the intake cam now can move up. Can you see this? And the goal here is to move. Move it out of the socket here and kind of yank it out. Okay. Now loosen it more over there. All four. No, don't remove them. Yeah, loosen it.
Are you farting? Um, I'm sorry. Yeah. So, so. Little, little, uh, Sophie Pitt and Sophie, what was it, Sophie, uh, I was gonna say Sophie Marks. There you go. It's not recorded, so you guys know. I think it might be off. You done? Yeah. Okay. It's out. You know. I was able to take it off with all of these off. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, that's it. That's it. Let's take one of them off. Shit, I should be able to turn this oh, sideways. Mm-hmm. But it's not wanting to? Yeah. Maybe a little bit more loose? No, hold on. Twist. Twist it uh, counterclockwise. Uh-huh. And you'll be able to yank it out. Alright. Take the tensioner out, but make sure the chain stays on. Don't take the chain off. Oh. The tensioner has to come out. Yes. That's what you check. If the chain falls off and doesn't go back on, you die. <laughs> the cam has to come out. That means time is forward. <laughs> that was close. So, while you guys are watching this, okay, guys? Mark, move your hand. Yeah. So, to pull the intake cam out, remember, loosen the, all the caps for the exhaust side, but do not remove them. Loosen them. Well, remove um, the first. Yeah, remove the first one and the back one because you have to. There's no if and your butts about that but then you're gonna take these off on the intake side completely and then you're gonna rotate the cam counterclockwise and that the reason for that it's gonna pull the chain and give you the most amount of slack so the chain can come off So for his tensioner, one of the main issues he's having, it's leaking here, right here, on the this where the, the, the sensor goes in, and it's leaking and it's causing the, it's losing um, hydraulic pressure in the actual tensioner. So what happens is that when it gets, when he's driving at idle or slow speeds, it like makes a knocking noise, which again, it's screwing up the timing. Over retarding it, on being blind. Yeah, so. Once we're done, we got everything cleaned out. Um, Mark cleaned up and re- uh, cleaned the surface over here. So do not RTV this do part. Not RTV this part. <laughs> That's my fault. I'll take the blame. Update the description. Yeah, update the, the, <laughs> the do description. Not RT- you got to put a timestamp too at this point. <laughs> yeah, whatever. You know what? Just don't RTV the half moon seal. <laughs> done. Okay. So we're going to put the half moon seal first and then the metal plate uh, afterwards. Just the half moon seal first. Got it. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna install the the tensioner, uh, the tensioner next, and then we gotta time the cam uh, because that's gonna be what's next from this portion of the, of the, of the, of the DIY. It doesn't matter. It's just right there. That's it. Okay, so this goes in just like that. Um, hold on here. Okay, new angle. That way you guys can see. 
So here's the half moon seal. We already installed it and we cleaned the whole surface. So to get the new tensioner. The new tensioner? Yeah. Okay. That goes in next. I thought you had to tell the, the little seal first. No, no, you can't do that yet. Oh. You have to slide that one in. Oh yeah. I that forgot. one slides in. Um make sure there's no like the white packing. Oh yeah, foam. no foam inside of it. That would be bad. So on this guy, once you have it all, it should be completely compressed down. Um, new in the box. And grab your chain. It's stuck. It's stuck? Yeah. Oh, okay. Hold that? Yeah. And then we're gonna hoop it in. There we go. Oh, I need this guy. Okay, so now the tensioner is in. Okay guys, make sure you see the chain attached to the top and bottom and then get kinked in on the bottom or the top, okay? So right here, when we're, when we're this at this point now, um, we gotta make sure the first notch right here is here and we gotta count from this notch to from the left. So one, two, three, four, five, six, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Number 16, which I'm holding on to right now, is straight like 90 degrees, like up and down. It doesn't go in any other direction. So when you put the new cam, when you put your cam back in, this tooth and the notch on the actual cam has to be straight up. If you don't do that, your timing is off 100%. I'm just gonna tell you guys that right now, all right? So it's this one. You can mark it if you want to, but again, you can always just count it before you install it. And what happens when we put it in, we're gonna walk the chain to get it in the right spot. So if, if it's not even timed correctly, don't worry. You can walk the chain over and you can get it to where it needs to be. Did I slide in this one? Not yet. Oh, not until the cam is installed. Okay, so next is to time this appropriately. So we're gonna go kind of sideways. This is where it gets a little tricky to get the cam in here. Like I said, you gotta walk it. So now we're here. So you see what I mean by walking it? Uh, yeah. So you gotta turn it counter so the chain gets loose. So it's loose. Uh huh. And move it, and then you turn it. And do it like that. And then keep doing it until you uh -huh. until you get it to where it, you gotta rotate the whole thing around. Yeah, you, I saw it go in or upside down basically. Yeah. Did you get it? I think so. Pick it up. Oh, pick it up. Yeah, don't push it in. Oh. See when you push it, it gets stuck. There you go. Right. Okay. 
Oh, hang on. You got it? I think so. You gotta turn it hard. Oh. If not, it won't walk. Oh, I see. Make sure you're not scraping the surface of the cans. Oh, okay. Okay, so the way it works, I don't know if you guys watch the channel as much, but to time this, both notches are gonna be kind of straight up, kinda. Um, but the, the one on the, the exhaust side is always up, but to the left. So the notch, uh, the notch, and then you read the link on the left of it. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Now this notch, again, is straight up and down, and the link that uh, coincides with it is literally right above it. If those match together, you are officially timed. The engine is ready to be put back. I mean, the cam is ready to go back together and everything else is ready to go back. We gotta slide the cam, uh, the half of the cam tensioner seal is next. Um, that little metal one. This guy, you slide this baby like this. It's always facing down. Oh no, it faces up like this. Yeah, it has a little notches yeah. that go inside yeah. it. Like this, yeah, and then it follows this one. So, uh, this this uh, this special gasket right here is a uh, compression base. So this will activate, the moment you put pressure on it, it will activate and then pretty much uh, start sealing. Uh, it's, it has, it's smooth, but once you put pressure on it, it turns on and it spreads perfectly and creates a, a seal. So on the last step here, pretty much once we're done, put the caps back on. Uh, I like to put them in opposite order, so from furthest to to the center, working your way out, uh, and then tighten everything down by hand. Don't torque anything to spec. And the reason for this is we want to confirm because once you tighten everything down, the chain will pull apart, and it will get us a better idea if we're timed or not. If we are. And we're golden the car should fire right up and it should run just fine if the car is not timed it will fire right up or not fire and it'll have problems so we'll find out in a little bit once mark is done doing this stuff but hand tighten everything do not torque anything to spec these bolts don't go on very tight just fyi all right so pretty much at the end of that video we had some weird issues and it wasn't due to timing we, I don't know if you guys remember the previous video we did with Mark. We did the uh, ECS tuning um, ignition coil harness. And the thing that was wrong with that coil harness that I dislike with a passion, that it's a clip style. That's my wife. <laughs> uh, and it's a clip style that you have to like, you pin it and you clip it together. It's stupid. So what I ended up doing, uh, the, the wires when we, um, unplugged it and we moved the wire harness around it would just unplug itself and we were really tired of it i repaired it once and the car fired and then it started having issues again and we're like no no it can't be the timing no we took it apart we took the valve cover off it took everything apart and double check timing it was set but the car went in fire or it would fire and run like crud and we didn't know the ignition harness was uh, the wires were popping out of it and cylinder number two wasn't firing we couldn't figure it out um so the next step we, we did is like, we took it all apart. We redid the, the cam chain tension and everything. And it was timed. It was like, okay, so it wasn't timing. So me and Mark decided to look through everything. And we noticed that one of the wires popped out. And then as I fixed it, two more wires just popped right out. I'm like, you know what? I got over it. So if you guys saw the time lapse of uh, my cousin Sophia doing the wheel, you'll see me in the background working on Mark's car. And that's because I decided to strip all the wires, I soldered everything and heat shrinked everything and I repaired it way better than, than ECS tuning's um, harness that just sucks. Um, so the next time I'm going to do a DIY very soon actually on my car for the, not the same harness, but uh, 034 Motorsports version. And we're going to actually um, 
it's, it's still a connecting type but instead of that we're just gonna strip all the wire and then we're gonna pin not pin it but solder and heat shrink everything and show you guys how to do it that way and ends up number one the loom ends up being smaller you don't have this big square there and it's actually more flexible so you can move the wiring around it's a lot better it's a hundred percent better solution and number one it's safer it's watertight and it's just a better option but yeah once i fixed the harness the car fired up mark's been driving it now for over a week without a single issue uh he hit me up he's like yeah you were right the first time i go i know i know but he doubted me so many times i, I love mark because he keeps me on my toes and then mark the teenager is no longer going to be a teenager very soon he's gonna he's already in college and he's been driving that Mark IV now for over two years. And that car has gotten way over 20,000 miles on that rebuild motor. And the car's driving like a dream. The next goal, the next thing we're, we want to do for Mark, I don't know if you guys want to get involved. Maybe we can do a little uh, fundraiser. And he wants to do some coilovers and uh, some wheels for it. It's on stock, like 16s with tires. And it's on blown suspension. The suspension on that thing is gone. Like it's destroyed, it's literally stock from God knows when. So we really wanna chip in and help them out. So if you guys are interested, uh, put a comment down below. And again, as always, smash that subscribe and like button. And let's see if we can help out Mark and his Mark IV and get it looking dope. Um, he wants to really invest in making uh, the car more aesthetically pleasing. Uh, just because he's taking the car to college and he's excited for it. He loves the car. He drives the credit of it He's got a license. He's got it insured. He drives his little sister around and his mom around every now and then I think we should definitely help him out and make that car look legit and upgrade the suspension and some wheels, you know, why not? All right guys, peace out. Thanks for watching this episode of Peachy House Garage and as always here We're gonna break we're gonna fix and we're gonna repeat peace out. You guys have a wonderful day